The way an accountant values a business is really different to the way a business broker values a business. And it's important to understand the difference between the two if your business is on the block. Hi, I'm Ali Kane, and I'm the host of the Buy That Business podcast. Each episode, we talk to expert business brokers about everything you need to know when it comes to buying and selling a business. This episode, I'm joined by Ashley Rimacombe from Finn Business Sales. Welcome to the podcast, Ashley. Hi, Ali. Thanks very much for having me on. So where do you start when it comes to valuing a business? Yeah, yeah so it's a good question. So basically, um, selling a business, I suppose, is like selling any other product, to be honest. Every, every sort of product has a set of features and benefits, and every business has a set of features and benefits too. So it's a matter of just trying to work through what the features and benefits are for each particular business and being able to apply that um, in a situation where it adds value to the purchaser. So, for example, a recent business we've sold, one of the features of that business was that everything was paid up front. So whenever everybody bought a, bought a product, um, it was paid for in cash or credit card or whatever, um, but there were no accounts. So everything was paid up front. And what that meant was, as a benefit, it had very good cash flow because it was in the multi-millions um, which meant, therefore, you know, it had to um, have lower amount of capital reserves and also um, it reduces the risk for the purchaser. That sounds like a very attractive business model, that one that would be attractive to a potential acquirer. Yeah, of course, yeah. And so the other thing to consider, of course, is um, each business is an emotion, each business purchase is an emotional journey. And it's an emotional journey for both the purchaser and for the, uh, for the vendor. I suppose you've got to remember that the vendor, for instance, they've been probably working in that business 10, 20, 30, maybe 40 years. Um, so it becomes a part of their idiom. It becomes a part of who they are. And, uh, you know, when it comes time to actually moving on from that business, they're losing a part of themselves, a part of their identity. So it's a, it's a hugely emotional time for them, to be honest. And for the, for the purchaser, you know, that, that could also be an emotional time because they may have been, you know, saving their money over a long period of time for that eventual business purchase where it gets them out of the rat race, it allows them to be their own boss. That also has a quite a, uh, an emotional sort of hold on the purchaser as well. So, so as a broker, I suppose, the first thing we do or that I like to do is to go and visit the, the, um, the vendor in their environment and get a really good understanding of um, their journey, you know, their passion um, and their future plans. And that gives us a good understanding of the, of the motivating factors and it allows us to um, set up the pretext for how we'll present that business to a prospective purchaser. That's right. I mean, businesses are someone's life's work often. And on the other side, the vendors are spending a lot of money acquiring this asset. So, of course, there's going to be emotion to work through as you go through the transaction. Yeah, yeah, 100%. So what are some of the other data points that you look at when you are assessing a business other than income or revenue streams? Yeah, so I suppose um, keeping in mind that the financial data points are a major determining factor in the value of the business. Having said that, um, you know, it's only one part of, of, the, of the business, um, I suppose. So the first, the first place we look at is um, the profit and loss. And you can really gain a really good insight as to how a business is being run, a good understanding of, of what to look for when you're, when you're going through the profit and loss system. So, you know, things like um, you know, what's, being, what's being taken out of the business, um, what we call ad backs, what's being taken out of the business that aren't actually being utilised to generate real profits for the business. You know, things like your personal mobile phone or, or something like that, for example, that, you know, if it, if it wasn't taken out of the expenses, the business would still continue to make a profit, so to speak. We, we look at those and add them all back. And then, of course, depending on the size of the business and the type of business, you know, you, one of the major determining factors would be the return on invested capital, or, or WIS, as they call it, and EBITDA, which is the um, earnings before interest, tax, and depreciation. So they're the two major things. Uh, and along with, along with the cash flow, uh, cash flow is, is obviously an important factor. Terms of payment, for instance, and supplier commitments, because they all have a real impact on the business. Other things that, um, that we like to sort of consider are uh, the potential opportunities that, that a new purchaser can, can work with the business and expand the business because they're things that, you know, if there's nothing left, you know, if the rock has been all chipped away and there's nothing left, 
you know, that has less appeal. Yeah, there's got to be that blue sky, doesn't there, for the business, pretend for the new business owner. Yeah, yeah. I mean, people like to know that when they come into the business, they can add their little bit and and grow the business and, you know, introduce a few extra things or whatever it might be. But there's something there that they can, um, you know, that they can build on. And, you know, one of the major factors that the investors look at, for example, is risk. Risk is one of those things that um, investors take very seriously and things that can impact on the, the company's margin or future sales or, you know, will affect their competitive advantage. So that that's that's quite an important thing. And you don't want you don't want a business that 90% of their 90% of their operation comes from you know, like five customers, uh, whereas the other hundred customers sort of present two percent of their business. And you don't want all your supply coming from one supplier as either. So that sort of risk factors um, are quite quite uh, important in determining the value of the business. What about some of the other non-financial factors, things like the quality of the management team, the staff, um, the business's intellectual property, its approach to marketing? How do you assess factors like that? Yeah, so so we sort of look at that in two different ways. Um, one is, is um, you'd call the internal structural environment, and the second one is the external macro environment. So the internal structural environment are things like, you know, your processes, your procedures, um, your, your employees, and, and how the business is presented, you know, what, what the, what's the branding like, um, your IP, as you say. Um, and that sort of, they're the sort of things that, that we look at as, as internally. And if you, think of, if you think of someone like McDonald's, for instance, they've got fantastic procedures and, and processes and everything's documented. And what that means is that the, the owner doesn't have to spend so much time in the business to ensure that it's going to generate the same profit because they know that the hamburger's turned here and three seconds later it goes to here and all that sort of stuff's all worked out. So as opposed to the local hamburger joint down the road, you know, they're all sort of running around trying to work things out all the time. So the manager's got to be there all the time. So, you know, that's one of those sort of really critical things. And, and then with the, with the um, macroeconomic environment, it's really those sort of things that uh, are out of your control. You have very little influence on things like um, consumer trends, government regulation, you know, market condition like like consumer confidence, for instance, and the ability to obtain finance. That's pretty critical as well. So, so they're the sort of macro things we look at. So, keeping all that into consideration, how that will affect the business. So that's very different to the way an accountant would appraise a business. What are the major differences between the two approaches? Yeah, so basically uh, accountants, for instance, you know, in my opinion, uh, are a rather rational, conservative bunch. You know, they've got the, the old, what used to be the brown waistcoat jacket, <laughs> um, which presents them in quite a, with a, quite a dour outlook. And, and predominantly their entire focus and reasoning for a business appraisal is based solely on yesterday's numbers, you know, yesterday's financial results. Now, that in itself doesn't give us doesn't give the vendor you know well it doesn't add reasonable weight to the myriad of business considerations that a vendor faces on a daily basis. Now the, you know the, the financial numbers are obviously quite an important bearing on the value of a business, but you know as previously mentioned, a business sale is an emotional roller coaster, and financial factors therefore only play one part of the consideration. It's the job of the broker, in my case, to paint a picture for the purchaser. One that takes all those non-financial considerations um, aspects into consideration, and generally builds value around those sort of things in the business. And through the emotional story and the pretext we heard about in the beginning um, of this interview, you can sort of you know add value where you need to. Um, for example, with that prepayment situation, uh, you know if somebody is looking to borrow money from a bank, you can go back and then accentuate that. That fact that that business um, compared to the other businesses they're looking at, everything's paid up front and they've got huge cash flows, so therefore it's less less of an issue for the bank for repayment system. So, so you you would try and add value by by building those sort of benefits up. You need a broker uh, because the purchase is, is the purchaser in many in many aspects, as we mentioned before, they're not they're not actually buying a business. You know, they're buying a dream in in most cases, and uh, or they're buying a lifestyle. You need to be able to portray that to the to the to the purchaser uh, in such in such a light that it's not just 
you know, hard numbers or financial data because that's, you know, that's often not what they're looking at. That's right. It's, um, you know, <laughs> being in business for, for yourself is rarely nine to five, so you've got to be invested in it and um, yeah. prepared to give it everything that you've got. Uh, 100%. Yeah. yeah, exactly right. Do you ever find that vendors struggle with giving up certain information about their businesses? They don't necessarily struggle to give up information about their business, but but often uh, they probably don't necessarily have the business information at hand. Right. Um, so often they're relying on their accountant or their um, uh, or their bookkeeper to actually supply the details that we need. So what's the best way for a business owner to work with you to get the best possible outcome? You know, as we as we sort of mentioned earlier, it's an emotional time for the business owner, and they've got a lot of ideas and they've got a lot of um, thoughts about how things should be done or the way things should be done, for example. And it's a fact. It's a, it's 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 a known fact. Well, it's not a widely known fact, but it is a known fact that when you bring emotion into a situation, it um, drastically reduces your ability to apply critical thinking. We we try and uh, remind the vendor that we have a process. And it's a proven process that gets results. It's been around a long time. Um, and the reason why they've gone with the Fin Group is because, you know, they've done their research. They know what we do and how we go about it because we present all that sort of information up front. And, and I suppose, you know, without being blunt, you've got you to sort of, sort of remind them about the fact that they've actually employed us to do a job for them. So, um, so you've got to just gently and with, with understanding continually remind them that it's always best to stick to the process. Do you find that there's common sticking points that a lot of transactions go through? Yeah, okay, so, so I've worked with a, um, a number of vendors in the past and they've, they've um, previously tried to sell their business themselves and the deal tends to fall over right at the last minute. And that's because at the pointy end of the sale, uh, you know, there's a number of people involved in the sale. All of a sudden, you're not just dealing with, you know, the purchaser as a vendor, um, you're dealing with the purchaser's accountants. You're dealing with the purchaser's landlord. Um, you're dealing with the vendor's lawyer. You're dealing with the purchaser's lawyer. And there could be two or three directors. Um, so communication becomes critical at that point. Uh, and, and keeping on top of the process, you know, whilst gently pushing everybody along to the, um, the settlement date uh, becomes quite tricky. And, and the reason for that, I suppose, you know, everybody has their own motivation. Uh, everybody has their own process. Um, everybody has their own personal structure. and, and, and that. You know, that can be, you know, fast-paced, slow-paced rationals, fast-paced emotional people. So, so it's just a matter of keeping everybody on the same page and, uh, you know, keeping them motivated to, to achieve their own individual goals. You know, for example, a, a lawyer just wants, it's just a transaction for them. It's a bit of paper, a bit of transaction, you know, and, and they just want to get it done. So that there's none of the, the emotional stuff involved that we were talking about earlier. For them. And, and finally, what's your best piece of advice for someone when it comes to selling their business? Yeah, well, I'd, I'd sort of, you know, just sort of say, well, um, don't for a minute think it's a simple process and you can easily do it yourself. That would be basically what I'd sort of say. I mean, as we sort of mentioned, there's a lot of complexities involved, there's a lot of uh, issues and there's a lot of personalities. And, and it's, a, it's a long process. It can take sort of, you know, six months of negotiation backwards and forwards and keeping everybody in the picture. So, you know, it all seems pretty straightforward, but, you know, it, it becomes quite complex when it becomes, you're talking about emotion, you're talking about money, you're talking about, you know, life, a life-changing situation. So you want to try and keep the emotion out of it and by invi in involving a broker, you know, taking yourself one step back from that situation. And so, see, that would be my best piece of advice. I mean, I know it's self-exact for myself, but at the end of the day, it helps, the, it helps the business as well. I, I think that's a good piece of final advice to end the podcast on. So that's all we've got time for today. We love to hear from the audience, so please get in touch if you've got any comments, questions or story ideas. Thanks very much and we'll see you next time. Thanks, Ali.